KDE Plasma is an awesome desktop environment for many reasons. One of the most powerful features it offers is the ability to customize pretty much anything you want. You can change the look and feel of the entire desktop in a seemingly endless amount of ways. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to customize the panels, aka the taskbar, of your KDE Plasma desktop. So let's get to it. This video is being recorded on using KDE Plasma 5.24. Maybe not everything is going to be accessible to you if you're using an older version of KDE Plasma, but this is the current version of Plasma as it is today of the recording. So like I said, there's an endless amount of things you can do with customization inside of Plasma. So I'm not gonna be able to cover absolutely everything, but I will cover a few things to highlight to show you what exactly you could do, and then you could dig in more to customize it however you like your system to be set up. So first of all, let's talk about the panel itself. You can resize it, you can move it, you can do all sorts of stuff. So let's start by just moving the panel from the bottom to the top. So in order to do that, we just right click the panel and we go into the edit mode. And then here you just drag and drop it up the top and that's it, you're done. Now you'll see when I clicked away, the configuration bar moved and shows this other option of the add widgets, configure desktop and wallpaper, choose global theme, configure display settings. These are really nice in terms of you know, being able to quickly access customization for your system settings. However, they're not necessarily practical for the editing of the panel. So in order to get that menu to come back, we're gonna go to the top right or in the bottom right when you, if you don't move it up to the top, you're gonna click the configure panel button, which will give you all those options back. Now the next thing we're gonna do is change the panel height. We just go into here, click in here. We're gonna say we wanna make it 22 pixels. It'll make it very small, so you might not wanna do that, but maybe you do. Or you wanna go the other way and make it 72 pixels. You could also do that. I'm gonna put it back to the default of 44 though. All right, next up, let's talk about what is currently in the panel. Everything that you see in the panel is a widget. A lot of people would think about widgets being those things that sit on top of the desktop, and those are also possible. You can put them on the desktop too, but you can also put every widget inside of the panel, which makes it very, very flexible because you can do all sorts of cool things with your setup if you want. So let's talk about the individual pieces that are on the default panel. To start, let's check out the start menu. So we're gonna click the main menu button and you're gonna see that it has all the different options of the categories and the applications installed and that sort of stuff. Sleep, restart, shutdown, etc. You can also go into the configure section so you can configure the application launcher. You will see that you can change the icon, you can customize the search plugins, you can change some other things of how it's displayed and that sort of stuff. What's really cool is the search plugins and by default everything is turned on but you don't have to have everything turned on so you can customize this however you want. Now here's a quick tip related to the super key activation of the menu. Sometimes you can make configuration changes that will cause some kind of issue. Like for example, if you install any some kind of plugin or some kind of thing for your system settings, like a look and feel theme that might make some changes, it also might mess up the shortcuts. So it's not very common this would happen. It's almost unheard of, but it can happen. So I did it on purpose to show you what to do. So when you click the super key on the keyboard, it it will, it, like I just did, it didn't do anything. What it should do is just open the menu. To fix this, we go into right click into here. We're gonna go into configure application launcher, go to shortcut and you'll see that it says none. Sometimes it just gets reset by whatever random thing that you might've installed. So that's the one of the negatives of having the ability to customize everything. Sometimes there might be some weirdness that happens, but it's worth it because Plasma is awesome. So we're gonna click into here. You're gonna hit Alt F1. And I know that makes no sense, but that's what it is. Now, when I click Super Key, there it is. I can go back into the history of why it's Alt F1 and all that if you want to, but I'll save that for a podcast because it is kind of interesting, but at the same time, not really relevant to this video. All right, the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is the still in the main menu, but there's actually alternatives to the main menu. So if you don't like the default one, which is the application launcher and also kickoff, which is the package name for this particular feature, right click the menu and change it by clicking show alternatives. This will give you the options of the application dashboard and the application menu. Let's go with the menu. All right, so now once we've changed it, we're gonna see a different kind of menu, a more compact. It still has most of the same features. You still have the ability to use the search function and have all the different stuff show up, but you're also gonna have a nice list style with the categories and subcategories and applications and all that. So if you prefer this style, then you can switch to the application menu instead. 
All right, next up is the task manager, and that is basically where the applications that are pinned, and when you launch applications, that's where they're gonna show. This is the icons only task manager. This is a default option, which is my preference actually, so I'm really glad it is a default, but if you'd wanna change it, you can also do this. So we're gonna right click it, show alternatives, and it'll give you the options for task manager and window list. We're gonna go to those in a second, but first, if you go into the configure icons only task manager, you can actually make some changes depending on your preferences for how it displays. So you get the behavior controls and there's lots of stuff in here. You can change how it goes through like when you cycle with the mouse uh, scroll wheel on the applications or how it reacts when you middle click on the buttons, for example, if you wanna do that. So you can middle click any task and open a new window by default. Or you can change that to say close window or group. And this is what I prefer because it makes it really quick to close a lot of applications provided that you have multiple applications running. So this is what I would do. And but this, of course, your preference, do whatever you want. All right, so let's say you don't wanna have this style and you would like to have a more traditional style of having the application, the window title and that sort of stuff kind of displayed on the panel. You right click and go to show alternatives and we're gonna choose the task manager option. And now once we click, for example, Dolphin, you'll see that it opens it and shows the location of where we are, which is home. If we go into documents, it'll update there as well. So one feature I like to do with my icons only task manager is to change how it functions when I use my mouse to click things. So when you right click configure, you're gonna go into behavior and now you can make a lot of different changes here. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do, but the thing that I like to change for the middle clicking, then I change that to close a window or group. And the reason why is because I like to have uh, multiple applications open, but closing them one at a time is kind of annoying. For example, three of these open. When I middle click this dolphin entry, it will close them all. It's just a nice time saver that I like to use. Now the system tray is where all of your applications are being stored in the background. If they're running, if they stay running in the background while you close the window, then they'll be in the system tray more than likely. The cool thing about the system tray is that it's not just that it has all these different things that show up in the system tray. They also have this drop down button. So when you click this, it shows you all the hidden items that are currently not active. So for example, if you have the night color modes control set up based on the time of day, it will automatically activate this and put it on the panel when it turns on. So you can easily turn it back off if you want to. And how it does this is go, you go into the configure system tray section and you'll see these entries sidebar option. You can make a ton of different customizations in here. For example, let's say you don't want notifications to show at all, you can go into here and say always hidden. Now there's also this option to say disabled. Disabled means it's not going to be in the system tray at all, not even in the hidden section. Whereas always hidden, it will just keep it always inside of this hidden section. So this is what I prefer to do. I hardly ever disable anything. I put a lot of stuff inside of the hidden section. Now let's take a look at the clock widget. So you can right click it and go into configure digital clock. And here you can make some changes whether to not show the date at all, which will make the time much bigger. Another thing you can do is right click show alternatives option. You could do the analog clock, you can do the binary clock, you can do the fuzzy clock. So if you choose fuzzy clock, it will do this. And you can also change it to be a binary clock if you wanna do that. Not very useful at all. So I'm gonna change it back to the digital clock. All right, so the next thing is this show desktop button. Now with the show desktop, you're just gonna click this and it's gonna show the desktop. So this is for people who have a lot of icons on their desktop so you can have access to them very quickly. Click the button again and we'll bring all the applications back exactly how they were. Some people prefer to not have them all come back at once. If you're one of those people, you can right click show alternatives and you can change it to minimize all windows. And when you switch to this, now when you click it, and then you open one application back, it will not bring back everything. All right, so next let's talk about adding some new things. Right click and go into add widgets. So in this options, you have tons of different widgets. You can add an activity pager, you can add a global menu, you can add all sorts of stuff. Also another benefit of this top right here, it says the get new widgets. Now when you click this, there's an option that says download new plasma widgets. If you go to store.kde.org, you will see all of these things in there as well. You can go in here and then search for it in the search box, and then you can easily just click install button, and it makes it super easy to get stuff. 
directly from the store. In the 17 tips you didn't know about plasma, I covered this a little bit there as well, as well as many, many other things. So if you haven't seen that video, go check that out. All right, so what I wanna do is to kind of make a Mac-like experience. Now I'm not gonna make it look exactly like Mac, but I'm gonna make it work similar with the top panel and having a dock at the bottom. So we're gonna right click, do add panel, and you'll see all the different po options you have. You can choose the empty panel. Once I have this set up, I wanna right click, enter edit mode. First, I wanna make this much larger. So let's make it a 72. And then we're also going to center it. Now it's because it's maximized, you can't really see that anything has changed. But when you grab this, I arrow over here and sort of like resize the width. The other part about this more options panel is the visibility options. And now this is gonna be very important for a dock because you don't want the dock to take up all the space that's, that a panel normally would. The options by default is always visible, which means it's gonna take up the space. But we're, we're gonna see all this space on the bottom right and the bottom left are gonna be not accessible to the window. So we can choose to let allow windows to go below the dock so the dock is always sitting on top or they can go on top of the dock or you can choose auto hide. It's gonna not be visible until you move your mouse to the edge of the screen and when it detects your mouse, it will then pop up and give you access to make changes or open applications and that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and add a new widget. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna type icons only. I'm going to drag it down to here. Like I don't like it how it's aligned in the left or on the side of the panel. So I'm going to right click. We're going to go into edit mode. We're going to add a spacer and then another spacer. And then we're going to move one of these spacers to the other side. Now when we close the edit mode, you'll see it is now centered in the middle of the dock slash panel. Now, if you want a full-blown dock, you could also check out the Latte Dock application, which gives you a lot more features and power and customizations and tons of great stuff. It deserves its own video. If you would like for me to do a video on that, then let me know in the comments below. But for now, I just wanted to show you how you can do some customizations on the plasma panels themselves to sort of get the approach of a Mac-like experience. All right, next up, we don't need to have two different task manager things. So let's edit mode, hover over this, and you'll see that it has the remove option drop down. We're gonna click that, we're gonna remove it. And now we need to add something here because you'll notice that once I removed it, all the space that was taking up by the, ta the, the task manager is now creating some weirdness happening between the different widgets. We're gonna add a spacer, and then we're gonna take this spacer we're just gonna move it right here. You'll see that it is now spaced like it is supposed to be again. So let's go ahead and add another widget because if we're gonna do the Mac-like experience, we need a global menu. So let's do that. We're gonna add widgets. We're gonna go into the search, type global menu, and then we're just gonna drag and drop it onto the menu here. And you'll see it, you'll, you're actually not seeing it there because by default, there's no application open right now, so you can't see it. But when I hover, you'll see that, that it does indicate that something is there. I'm gonna open Dolphin and you'll see global menu activate immediately once Dolphin is open. This global menu is fantastic. It's a really cool feature. It doesn't work with every application because some applications don't implement tools to connect with it, but when it does work, it is really slick. So I do like having it. So that is how you customize the plasma panels for the KDE Plasma desktop. There's a lot of customizations I didn't go into because there's just there's just too many things to cover on in the video. So hopefully this was a good guide to show you how to get started and how to get into your own customizations for your setup of your KDE Plasma desktop. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions related to this video or maybe some requests for what I should cover in the next video, leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching. I'm Michael Tanell, and I'll see you next time.